Hi, and welcome to lecture 4 of the Fluid Mechanics Primer. We're going to talk about transforming our fluid equations into a rotating frame. And the reason we do that is because uh, we're preparing for a course on geophysical fluid dynamics, and, and as you know, uh, the Earth is a lump of rock spinning through space, and what that means is that for scales large enough, we feel the effects of this Earth's rotation. So, if I'm standing uh, at a point X here, marked in red on the right, on the surface of the Earth, and the Earth is spinning at constant rotation rate omega, that's an angular velocity omega, then I have to be cognizant of the fact that this Navier-Stokes equation on the left that I derived here was derived in the fixed frame of reference, not a rotating frame like the Earth. So I'm going to denote the, the fixed by the subscript F, and the way to think about how we're going to make this transformation is to start by thinking, well, let's say I'm sitting in the rotating frame, so I'm going to use subscript R, and, I, and I'm sitting still, so my velocity is zero. In other words, my dx dt is zero. Now, if I then remove myself from the rotating frame and sit in the fixed frame, well, I can see something quite different, because in the fixed frame, I can see this point spinning around in space, and in fact, you can show that it spins around at the angular velocity crossed with the cross product of uh, the position vector x. Okay, so that is uh, df of x dt, where the subscript f denotes I'm in the fixed frame. I'm going to put a little r up here in this derivative to show that my velocity there is in the rotating frame. So, in general, what we can write is that df x dt is equal to dr x dt plus omega cross x, okay, or equivalently uf equals ur plus omega cross x. Okay, so the interesting thing uh, about this equation here is that it applies to any vector, not just to x. In other words, I can quite easily substitute uf into there, and the reason I want to substitute uf into there is because uh, I want to make a parallel with uh, this equation here. So then I can write df uf dt is simply equal to dr of uf dt plus omega cross uf. Okay. Seems easy enough so far. Let's move this up here. And I want to continue on this equation. And what I can then do, of course, is I can take this uf and I can substitute in from this equation here. So that gives me d, subscript r, dt, of ur plus omega crossed with x plus omega crossed with ur plus omega cross r, uh, x, sorry. Okay, so I'm slightly off the page there. And so the next thing to do here, of course, is I'm going to pull out all the bits I want. One of the things I do want is I do want my dr dt of ur. Okay, now, uh, of course, my rotation vector doesn't change with time. 
So I can pull my omega r out, and this is drx dt, so that's just ur. Okay, and here, lo and behold, I've got another ur, so both of these terms give me a ur, and they don't cancel, they add. And here, I've got an omega cross omega crossed with x. Okay. So now I'm actually, uh, actually I'll simplify this first and then I'm going to uh, substitute it into the Navier-Stokes equation. So we've got a dur dt uh, there, we've got a 2 omega cross ur, okay, and this is going to be my Coriolis force here by the way, plus my omega cross omega cross x. So we're now in a position to take the fixed form Navier-Stokes equation, which I started with, which if you remember had a df uf dt, and we can now write a dr ur dt on the left, and what we get is we get 2 omega cross ur down here, and on the right hand side uh, we have similar terms, but we're going to leave this omega crossed with omega crossed with x term on the right hand side, and we've got still got pressure gradients there unchanged, and the viscous term, in fact, uh, it transfers straight over to the uh, rotating frame quite happily, okay, without because it we're taking the Laplacian of it. So we'll forget about that term. So the last point about this is that the this equation here, this term in this equation here, represents the centripetal acceleration. So that's the the uh, um, flu uh, fluid being pushed outwards from the axis of rotation. And in fact, what you can do is you can really it's pretty small that term, and you can combine it in the geopotential. So we're just going to define a geopotential uh, G, which includes both of these terms, and, and we'll get rid of this small term here. And what we're left with, and I'll drop the R's now, is an equation, I will write it in red, du dt plus 2 omega crossed with u is equal to a geopotential term minus grad p on rho, Plus a viscous term. So this whole transformation has added this one term, and that's the term which describes the Coriolis force. So that's where the Coriolis force comes from. Of course, in a atmosphere or ocean, which is a tiny thin shell of a fluid layer sitting on the rotating Earth, we can make further approximations. And really, uh, the approximation we make is that it's the vertical component of omega, uh, which is important. And so we're going to define a Coriolis parameter, f, which is equal to 2 omega sine theta, where theta is latitude. Okay, so this, this is a latitude-dependent Coriolis force because we only care about the, the vertical component. Uh, of Coriolis in the local frame. And for this reason, uh, what we actually tend to write this equation as is a du dt plus f times, that's the absolute value of f times k crossed with u equals a right hand side. So that's all pretty standard. I, before I go, I just want to show you one more thing about how we unpack uh, this term here when we're uh, looking at a regular equation set, and that is that really this k cro this f times k crossed with u, if we just look at the x component of velocity, it works out to be a minus f times v, uh, and of course we don't have any uh, gravity in that direction, so we've just got to run on row 0 times dp dx plus mu times grad square u, 
when our u is a, not a vector, it's just a scalar. And likewise, if we write a v component or a, a, a momentum equation in the y direction, we end up with a f uh, plus f, excuse me, plus f u on uh, the left hand side and all the other terms of course uh, look fairly similar okay so uh, these uh, this Coriolis term in in this approximation simply comes down to uh, an extra term on each line of the horizontal momentum equation where uh, the velocity is scaled by this Coriolis parameter I think I'm going to stop there and, and, and hope that this was all useful and look forward to seeing you in Canberra for the winter school. Thank you.